Romans chapter 1, I read from verse 18 to 25. Some of you may know that we're doing a series called After Knowing God. Hopefully this will be the last segment and God is great. He's slotted it in nicely as we go into our Shiloh. We thank God for what he's doing and what he's laid ahead of us for the freedom impact. Amen. Lots of goodies. Oh, amen. There are loads of goodies ahead of you. You know, there's a game that they, they play called Treasure Hunt. Treasure Hunt. And you, you dig for treasure. And what we have this week is a treasure hunt. Amen. You want to dig. Every digging that you find underneath it would be treasure. Amen. After knowing God. The wrath of God is being revealed from heaven against all the godlessness and wickedness of people who suppress the truth by their wickedness. Since what may be known about God is plain to them because God has made it plain to them. For since the creation of the world's world, God's invisible qualities, his eternal power and divine nature have been clearly seen, being understood from what has been made so that people are without excuse. Verse 21, for although they knew God, they neither glorified him as God nor gave thanks to him, but their thinking became futile and, full, and their foolish hearts were darkened. Although they claimed to be wise, they became fools and exchanged, and exchanged the glory of the immortal God for images made to look like a mortal human being and birds and animals and reptiles. Therefore, God gave them over in the sinful desire of their hearts to sexual impurity for the degrading of their bodies with one another. They exchanged the truth about God for a lie and worshipped and served greater things rather than the creator who is forever praised. Somebody say with me, Amen. Amen. We were concentrating on verse 21 and last time we talked about how we might glorify God and how it's very important that we should glorify God. Um, on your way out, the bookshop is there, CDs, DVDs are available. Please purchase one. Um, Deuteronomy 16, 13 to 17, you don't have to turn there. Today we're going to talk about giving thanks to God and a couple of scriptures that I want to bring to our memories, our minds and their attention and then we'll pray. Deuteronomy 16, 13 to 17, you are writing notes, please write it down. It says this. It says, celebrate the uh, tabernacle uh, for seven days after you have gathered the produce of your threshing floor and your wine press. Be joyful at your festival, you, your sons and daughters, your male and female servants, and the Levites, the foreigners, the fatherless who live in your towns. For seven days, celebrate the festival to the Lord your God. For the Lord your God will bless you in all your harvest. I expect an amen. And the work of your hands and your joy will complete. be complete. Yes, verse 16. Three times a year, all your men must appear before the Lord your God at the place he will choose, at the festival of unleavened bread, the festival of weeks, and the festival of tabernacles. No one should appear before the Lord empty-handed. Each of you must bring a gift in proportion to the way the Lord your God has blessed you. Say with me, amen. I chose this scripture, that's just by the by, to remind us that this is our time to come up to the Lord. Amen. It's a time of thanksgiving. And when you read Deuteronomy, when you go home, because I want us to pray, I'm probably rushing, speed dialing through it. But when you go home, go through the chapter, God instructs Israel how they must thank him. And the reason why he did that is because it is very important that we are thankful. Remember the scripture that we've read, our main scripture in Romans 1. Because if we are not thankful and we don't train ourselves to be thankful, our minds will become futile and we will become godless. We will join the wicked. We will walk in step with the wicked. And so it's very, very important, especially this is our season, love and action. We are, it is our season, whatever we do will prosper because we are just like the one who walks in step with, the God and with God but not with the enemy. Amen. So if we are not thankful, that's what happens. We go down. And that's why he said it. And the scripture tells us three times a year they must appear before the Lord. So in Israel, and even up to now, they have three times a year where they have Shiloh or Thanksgiving. But you and I, we're blessed. We have once a year. Amen. Once a year. What God requires of us is once a year, as families, as individuals, as a body of Christ, Freedom Center International, we must appear before God. 
And he says we should appear not empty-handed. And this is our season. A week today will be our time to appear before the Lord. It will be our Shiloh. It will be our Thanksgiving. It will be our festival of unleavened bread, the festival of weeks, the festival of tabernacles. And in fact, there are many more that are added to it. And so it says, each one of us, we must bring a gift in proportion to the way the Lord, your God, has blessed you. What it means to say is that however you feel that God has blessed you, we have not been given this year a prescription. Sometimes pastor will tell us, you know, if you bring a month's uh, salary, sometimes he'll tell us how, he'll give us guidelines. But this time there are no guidelines. And that is why it's very important, like pastor's been teaching us during this prayer, about intimacy with God. We need to have an intimate relationship with God. Because when you have an intimate relationship with God, he will tell you what he wants from you. Amen? Because Abraham had an intimate relationship with God, he told him what he wanted. He said, I want Isaac. So today, God, we're going to pray into it that whatever it is that God requires of you and I, we will not come empty-handed. But the Lord will instruct us. This is your time. Three times a year you must approach. Perhaps you might even want to train yourself to give yourself three times. As a church, we have one time, which is freedom impact. Maybe you can add your birthday to it. Maybe you can add your end of year to it. Three times a year, approach. Train yourself that you can be scriptural. That you can come, not empty-handed. We are, thankfully, we are not, uh, no offense to Jehovah Witnesses, we're not Jehovah Witnesses. I remember when I was 50, I, I went to celebrate, I was thankful, God opened the door, went to Curacao, and when I went on the day of my birthday, I booked a massage, and I was just really looking forward to it. And then I, I, I went in, and I, I was just like, oh, very excited. And when I got there, the first lady that met me, I said to her, today is my 50th birthday. And so I'm here for a massage. So on behalf, I'm do, celebrating on behalf of all Jehovah Witnesses in the world, because Jehovah Witnesses don't celebrate birthdays. So I said that, and then she said to me, please, can you sit down, put me in this place? I was very excited, whatever. Anyway, and then somebody else attended to me. When I was leaving, this person that met me at the door that I had told is my 50th and that I was celebrating on behalf of all Jehovah's Witnesses came to me and said, I'm so sorry I didn't wish you a happy birthday, but I'm a Jehovah's Witness. <laughs> I said, oh, okay, never mind. It's okay. I'm like, oh, dear. But at least I'm thankful. The when, as far as I'm concerned, when God increases you and blesses you, you ought to give him glory. Amen. It's an opportunity. So three times a year, add it to your time to approach and approach on behalf of all Jehovah Witnesses. Amen. Let's get to Exodus 36. We're about to pray. You have your Bibles. Please turn to me with me to Exodus chapter 36, 1 to 7. Exodus 36, 1 to 7. So, Bezaliel, Oholiab, and every skilled person to whom the Lord has given skill and ability to know how to carry out all the work of constructing the sanctuary are to do the work just as the Lord has commanded. Then Moses summoned Bezaliel and Oholiab and every skilled person to whom the Lord had given ability and who was willing to come and do the work. They received from Moses all the offerings the Israelites had brought to carry out the work of constructing the sanctuary. And the, morning con and the people continued to bring free will offerings morning after morning. So all the skilled workers who were doing all the work on the sanctuary left what they were doing and said to Moses, the people are bringing more than enough for doing the work the Lord commanded to be done. Then Moses gave an order and they sent this word throughout the camp. No man or woman is to make anything else as an offering for the sanctuary. And so the people were restrained from bringing more because what they already had was more than enough to do all the work. Somebody say with me, amen. I read Proverbs 3, 9 to 10. Write it in your notes. Honor the Lord with, all, with your wealth, with the first fruits of all your crops, then your bands will be filled to overflowing and your vats will brim over with new wine. Amen. 
this is your season. Say to your neighbor, this is your season. And then say to yourself, this is my season. This is about glorifying God and thanking him. And this scripture, I'm sure you don't need me to say anything else. Hopefully it's self-explanatory. This is Moses that God specifically gave instructions to about thanksgiving. About how he ought to train his people in thanksgiving. In fact, God specifically called these people, can't pronounce their names, Bezaliel and Aholiel. He endowed them with specific skill to build the temple. And then he told Moses that these are the people that must build. You are Bezaliel and you are, what's his name? Aholiel, if you're looking for (laughs) a name for your son. That's who you are. Because God has set you aside and endowed with you with a specific skill to build Freedom Center International. And so God is calling you. He's calling I. And so every skilled person, he said, to whom the Lord has given skill and ability to know how to carry out all the work of constructing the sanctuary. Now you and I know that we, this building doesn't need to be built as in stuff like that. But this movement has to be built. And this is your season and it is mine. And so as he sends an invitation to you and I, we've already said that intimacy is important. It's important that we understand that it's God's idea that three times a year we must come up. It is God's idea to to endow you with that skill and ability. And we know from this scripture that the cry went out. Moses made an announcement. According to how God has blessed you, bring an offering. And the people began to bring their offering. They brought their gold, their silver, their bronze. You see that Olympics that we get, gold medal and silver medal and bronze medal, they got it from the scripture. That's, that's what it was. According to their ability. The person who's saying both gets gold according to his ability. And the silver person according to his ability and bronze according to his ability. God is not expecting you and I to, to give the exact same thing but according to how he's blessed you. And also according to how you feel or where you want to be. Sometimes we ought to push ourselves. We might not be there, but you may want to push yourselves a little bit. But whatever it is, God requires of us to give. Because God, have you ever wondered to yourself why he wants you and I to give? Because God is a God of principle and he operates in principle. God wants to bless you and I. Before we started, he started telling the scriptures about come, approach. Why? Because he wants to bless you. He wants you and I to call on him. Why? Because he wants to answer your prayer. But he wants us to do certain things in principle. And that is why the scripture tells us very clearly, give and it shall be given to you. Press down, shaking together and running over. Reason why he wants us to be thankful is because when we're thankful, we touch his heart. And then he opens his hand. Who doesn't love to be praised? Show by hand. Internet people, you can show by hand. I can't see you. We love to be praised. Because remember, we are after God's image and likeness. God loves it when we say, oh God, you are great. He says, some more. Oh God, you're so beautiful. (laughs) Sorry, I didn't hear you. You know, some of us, when we get complimented, we say, pardon. Not that we didn't hear. We want to hear it again. So, sorry, I didn't hear what you said. I said you're beautiful. <laughs> he wants to hear us time and time again. To, and to, for, he wants us to tell him, not because we want to flatter him, but it is the truth that he's our source. That without him, we cannot manage. Without him, we'll be dead. Without him, the enemy would have devoured us. You know how, you know, it's Shiloh, but you know very soon you can eat your chicken. You know how you eat your chicken. You know, you know. Some of us eat the chicken. The chicken's dead, 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 dead. The bones, you chew the bones. Yeah? I smell the blood, I smell the blood of an Englishman. Be he be alive or be dead, I grind his bones to make my bread. That's what the devil wants to do to you and I. Not only will he chew us, the, he's not having the meat, he'll have the bones. And when he's finished, he spits out the bone and he grinds it. 
But thank God for Jesus. He's never coming near you. It's only with your eyes will you see. And behold, the reward of the wicked. A thousand shall fall on your left and ten thousand on your right. It will not come near you. You just observe them dropping like flies. In fact, you just go, oh, what happened? You even be turning to try and come and help. Oh, let me help you. Have you ever seen that before? Sometimes somebody drops and you're trying to help them. No, no, it's okay. So I'm okay. I'm okay. Why? Because they're not on your side. Hallelujah. Amen. You're even trying to reach out because you don't even know that God has protected you. And you're saying, oh, sorry, let me help you. You say, it's okay, it's okay, I'm all right. Look, if you're offering anybody help and they don't want it, they refuse it like that, let them go. Amen. We don't have to cast our pearls before swine. It's not everybody. We ought to do that. Let them go because you don't know what they were doing. And they will orchestrate, oh, uh, somebody ready for that victory cry. Amen. Shouts of joy and victory will resound in your tents because the Lord's right hand has done mighty things. It's time for you and I to pray to God. It is my prayer that you and I, Freedom Center International, will get to that point where Moses had to say, it's enough, stop. I like the word they used, verse 6. Then Moses gave an order. Please say with me, order. One, one thing to observe. Then they send this word throughout the whole camp. No man or woman is to make anything else as an offering for the sanctuary. And it was an order. <laughs> you know what an order is, yeah? That's a command. It's an order. It has to be obeyed. Watch this. No man. And so the people were restrained. Please say with me, restrained. Watch. Can you see the miracle? Somebody give the Lord a shout of praise. That is my portion. That is our portion as a people. An order was made. Now remember, Moses was so revered because Moses was God. Everybody, nobody, you couldn't imagine. You had to be, what's his name? Korah, is it? It's Korah that stood against Moses. Look what happened. The earth opened and swallowed him up. Can I prophesy to somebody? I prophesy that unction is yours. Amen. Anybody who opposes you, Korah and his people, they stood in front of Moses and they said, Ah, are you the only one? We're not, the, we're openly defiant. And Moses goes to God. God said, That's okay, don't worry. He made a public display of Korah and his men. There was no doubt that he was with Moses. I prophesy that's your portion. Anybody who's core in your life, let it be a clear display that God is on your side. Why am I telling you this? To tell you the color of birth of man who's given an order. Okay? That was in front of everybody. So even the ones that were not born, even the donkey knows that you can't go against Moses. Because if you go against Moses, for sure, so long, bye-bye. So long, bye-bye. And that's the unction that you must carry. That's what we carry in this house. And that's the nature. And he gives an order. Even before he said, I said oh, yes, sir, yes, sir, yes. Sir. But he gives an order. He sends his men all around. Say, this is, a, anytime they do an order, it's literally by an edit that you can't change it. Everybody stop giving. And Moses, this kind of guy, gives that order. He sends it around, and the people had to be what? Restrained. A prophesy. It means that they were reluctant to follow that order. Because they understood that God allows me to give because he wants to bless me. So you, Moses, are trying to stop my blessing. Saints, don't allow yourself to stop your blessing. Don't allow Moses to stop your blessing. They were restrained. It means that they had to put force on them. They had to sit on them. They had to tie them. It's my prayer that that's where we will get to. That we can train ourselves, our children. Don't let somebody say, you are so you, every day you're giving, giving. Why, why, why? No. Because through that, because he's a God of principle, he will bless you. Amen. Please rise with me.
This is our season for us to honor the Lord with our wealth, with our first fruits. Then our barns will be filled to overflowing and our vats will brim over with new wine. It's our season to glorify God. After knowing him, what must we do? When we say we're believers, we must glorify him, put him at the center, acknowledge him as our source, and then we must thank him. Our mission is raising overcomers, setting the captives free. Freedom Center International is here to support you in every step that you take with the Word of God as you seek spiritual and emotional wholeness. And we hope you've been blessed by today's message. Worship with us at 38 Upper Wickham Lane, Welling, Kent, DA16 3HF or give us a call on 0207 277 You can also visit us online at fcichapel.org And remember, there is progress in freedom.